you need to quit more books. You're running out of time. In this video, we're talking about how many books you have left to read before you die, when you should quit a book, and why you need to quit more books. Now, I used to be that person that has to finish everything they start, but I recently decided I'm quitting more books. When you realize how few books you have left to read, you're gonna wanna quit more books too. I found this test, how many books will you read before you die? And when I saw the answer, I was like, that can't be right. This number was far lower than I had hoped, but likely still more than a lot of other people's. See, the average American reads only 12 books per year. If you read 50 books per year, you're in the 99th percentile of American readers. Okay, so here is how you calculate how many books you have left to read before you die. You gotta go to the social security calculator and enter your gender and birthday. That number is how many years you have left. You multiply it by how many books you read per year and bam, that's your number. Does it seem like a lot? Cause it's not. Between 500,000 and 1 million books are published per year. And that doesn't even include self-published books. If you include self-published books, that number goes up to 4 million books. 4 million? 4 million books per year. So no, 2,360 books is not enough books. And I'm guessing if you're a book reader, your number wasn't enough either. So let's talk about how to increase that number. There are a lot of videos on YouTube about how to read more, but I actually don't think that's the answer. These videos suggest that if you just set aside more time for reading, listen to audiobooks while you do other things and read more than one book at a time, all your book problems will be solved. But me, I think the answer is to quit more books. Now this isn't the most obvious way to read more books, but before I explain to you the price of finishing everything you start, it's worth having a method to know when to quit. So Nancy Pearl, this famous librarian, if librarians can be famous, has a formula for reading. If you're under 50, give it 50 pages. If you're over 50, give it 100 pages minus your age. I actually think it works really well. And to read those 50 pages, I suggest you either use the library or use the book previews that you can get online. If you spend $30 on a book, there is a lot more guilt that you're gonna have to finish that book, even if it's bad. If you get it for free from the library, on the other hand, it's so easy to just return it and never look at it again. You can even lie to yourself and say, I'm gonna come back for that later. Now, don't get me wrong, I am not suggesting that you just pick easy books to pad your book numbers. Reading a challenging book can be really good, but it's knowing when a book is challenging and when a book is just a bad book. And a bad book is anything you're just not interested in anymore. If you're reading a bad book, you're not gonna wanna pick it up. So you're not gonna read. So you're gonna pick up your phone instead. You're gonna form other habits, making it harder and harder to read. When you do finish that book in three months, you're not gonna pick up another one because what if you pick up a bad one and then you're sentenced to finish that one too? That is not a great cycle to be in. Picking up the wrong book should not be a 13 hour mistake, nor should it be a three month long one. If the book is good, it should pull you forward, making you excited to see what's gonna happen next. And finding excitement in what you're reading is the best way to fight procrastination and create a reading habit. You'll just naturally find yourself reading more. So when you're reading a bad book, keep one thing in mind, the price. And that price is time. Every hour you spend reading a bad book is an hour that you don't get to spend reading a good one. Knowing what to read is just as important as knowing how to read. And how do you find the right books for you? Well, that is the impossible question. I could tell you to go find reviewers with similar tastes to yours. I could tell you to read a genre that you know you enjoy. I could tell you to use the Nancy Pearl pie chart method. But the truth is, no one knows. Those literary scholars that believe there are classics that you just have to read or you are somehow less than, yeah, don't listen to them. Those bestseller lists full of books that have been anointed by the publishing gods with hefty promotions and big book deals, yeah, they're probably wrong too. The only person who could possibly know what you like is you. But every time you pick up a book, there's still a chance you're not gonna like it. So the truth is, there are ways of increasing your chance to pick up a good book, but there is never any guarantee, which is why it is so important to give a lot of books a chance, but equally important to say, not for me quickly. The fastest way to read more books is by not reading most of them. As soon as you experience the joy of not finishing a book, it becomes obvious that this is the way it was supposed to be all along. Because with 129,864,880 books in this world, why would you waste your time on even one bad one? 